Okay, now in the next lectures, I want to start building our own backdoor. A backdoor is a program that when executed on a system would allow us to gain full control over that system. We're gonna implement this using sockets and you're gonna learn how to establish a connection between two devices and transfer data between them. This is very useful because it can be used in so many other scenarios other than hacking. So you can use it to create a web server, a chat program, and so on. Then we're gonna build more cool features in this backdoor so that we can use it to execute system commands remotely on the target computer, download and upload files, and maintain our access even if the system restarts. Now I'm gonna cover how to do all of this in details in the next lectures, but before we start programming, as usual, I'm gonna give you a quick teaser on how this backdoor will work by the end of this section. So don't worry about how this is working, I will cover that in details, but for now, I just want to show you how this backdoor will work so that you have a general idea of what I'm trying to achieve by the end of the section. Okay, so right now I'm in my attacking machine, the Kali machine, and as you can see, it's already waiting for incoming connections. This is using my listener program. Again, I'll show you how to do that, how to program that later on. And on my Windows machine, I have the backdoor already converted to an EXE. Again, we'll cover that later on. And again, it looks suspicious, but don't worry about that. We're gonna focus on getting a backdoor that works. And we'll talk about making this look less suspicious and how to make it look like any other file later on in the course. So right now, I'm just gonna execute this by double clicking it. This will execute the evil code, which will establish the connection between this computer and the hacker computer. And as you can see, it's telling me right now that I get a connection. So now I can use all the features that the backdoor allow me to do. And I'm just gonna show you a quick overview, just a teaser on what we'll be able to do with this backdoor. So first of all, I have file system access. So if I do CD, it will show me my current working directory. And as you can see, I'm in users Zaid downloads. That's basically because the backdoor is actually stored in this location. So I can do cd dot dot to go back one directory. And if I do cd now to see where am I, you can see I'm in Zaid. And we can also execute all system commands. And keep in mind, this backdoor works on all operating systems. It works on Linux, Windows, and OS X. So you can use the system commands of your target and they will work by default. So right now my target is Windows. So if I wanted to list the directories, I can do dir. And as you can see, I get a list of all the files and directories in the current working directory. Now I can go back in downloads by doing cd downloads. And if I list again in here, you'll see the files that we have in the downloads, which are the backdoor and the GTR image, which I have right here. Now I also want to highlight a feature that we're going to program, which is the ability to download files. So I'm just going to do download and I'm going to follow it by the file name that I want to download and it's the image. So it's gtr.jpg. And as you can see, I'll see it automatically being downloaded in here. And if we double click this, we have the image intact and we're able to open it. Now I'm downloading the image just as an example, but it just goes to show you that you'll be able to download any file from the target system. You can also upload files, which is really, really useful because you'll be able to upload evil files, viruses, keyloggers, and so on. And as an example, I'm just going to rename this image to gtr2.jpg and I'm going to upload it. So I'm going to do upload gtr2.jpg. Now it's telling me the upload is successful. And if we go here again, you can see we have the new image.
Now, if this was an evil file, because you're able to execute system commands from the back door, you'll be able to just call it from here and execute it remotely on the target computer. Now, I'm also gonna show you how to make this backdoor persistent. So even if the system restarts, it will automatically connect back to us when the system boots. Now, these are a lot of features and you're actually gonna learn a lot of programming concepts as we write this backdoor. So don't worry about how this is working. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but we're gonna break it down as usual and explain it simply so that it'll make sense to you and you'll be able to use the concepts that you learn here in any other scenario and in any other program.